It's spring. It's warm outside. In fact, it was the hottest May in the Netherlands for the past three centuries. In other words, the perfect time to make a spring ecosphere. I will be using this beautiful huge 10 liter jar, which is this many gallons, but two and a half is easier to say. I thought it would be fun to go to a different location to gather materials for the ecosphere. Because this ecosphere is going to be so big, I'm going to have to use buckets. Those are baby birds. Anyway, here's another location. Of course, we also need dirt. I caught this thing. I don't know what it is, but it's going in the ecosphere. Now it's time to put this monster together. I'm adding a little water to make it easier to smoothen out the surface. I'm also adding some plants for my aquarium because unfortunately I didn't find any in the ponds. And this ecosphere will have a higher chance of success with plants in it. Because it's a closed ecosystem and the plants will provide oxygen so all the animals don't have to rely just on the algae for oxygen. Now it's time for water. I'm throwing in this plate so the dirt will stay where it is. Sort of. Now the water needs about a day to clear up. Wow, that literally just took two seconds. It's a day later. As you can see, there's a huge amount of Daphnia in this huge ecosphere. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them died within a few days or weeks. But that's not a problem. Because it will stabilize the ecosystem, fertilize the soil, which the plants will love, and the aquatic isopods, which you'll see later on in the video, wouldn't mind eating some of them either. Now the most important step in building any ecosphere, sealing it off, with this airtight lid. This is the larva of a Chloeon dipterium, a species of mayfly. The larva can live up to a year. They molt over 20 times. The adults only live 4 or 5 days, during which time they don't eat, because after the last molt, the stomach is transformed into an airbag used for flying. One of the most exciting animals in this ecosphere, in my opinion, is the aquatic isopod, or Acellus aquaticus. Just like a normal isopod, it goes by many names, like water slater, water louse, aquatic sobuk, water hog louse, 
and many more. This is a water mite, they're cool too. And of course we have bladder snails, babies too. Do you see that wavy thing near its back? I don't know what it is for, but I don't think it's for breathing because its gills are located more near his head. Let's see it in slow-mo. We're gonna have baby isopods soon, because these two are breeding. Did you know this can last up to 3 days? That sounds exhausting. It's time for a boogie compilation. Remember the red worm I showed you earlier? There he is. This is a Erpoptella octoculata. It doesn't have a common English name, so I'll translate the Dutch name directly into English. An eight-eyed blood hedgehog. Yeah, it is eight eyes. Daphnia that's about to swim into focus did a really freaky dance move. All dancing. I don't know what type of water spider this is, but if you do, let me know. This is definitely my favorite ecosphere. It's so big and there's so much life. If you have a favorite critter, put it in the comments. I'm interested to hear about it. I am going to make updates on this ecosphere and of course other projects, so if you haven't already, well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching!